smoke marijuana, especially our older ones. They smoke marijuana. We drank. We had parties, you know, at our house. We was the house that had parties. You know, if you know anything about if you were from North Carolina, Fayetteville, North Carolina, if you know anything about Hollywood Heights, um, that area over there, that's where I grew up at. So when he met me, he started coming around my family. And a lot of times when you can you can grow up in church, you can, um, you know, even be a, a Christian at a young age. But the what the Bible says, separate yourselves from those who walk disorderly. And he came into contact with my family. I'm just going to be real <laughs> with my family. And of course, you got your girlfriend. She's young. And I wasn't really smoking marijuana then. And of course, that transition and I did start smoking marijuana. But he came in contact with my family. And that's what we did. OK, even the ones who did it then, they don't do it now. Thank God. But that's what we did. We drank, we smoked, we party. Um, and so you came in contact with my family. What was the transition? Coming in contact with your family was transition. <laughs> See, 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 I try to, I try to exactly. shift that nicely. Um, shift it right back to you. Just, shift it right back. I told on myself, but you didn't have to say it like that. I mean, she tell it better than I can tell. It. See, I try to say it nicely because he usually throw it out there. Got with my wife, family, and now start smoking dope. You know. I didn't even know. I didn't even know what marijuana looked like. <laughs> I didn't know what marijuana looked like. So I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. Oh, I wasn't doing those things, you know? So then when I got with my wife and her brothers or her uncles, there was, there was a brothers. Mm -hmm. So I just yielded to the temptation. It seemed like, I mean, one thing about me when I was a sinner, I didn't have no problem mm -hmm. being a sinner. <laughs> I didn't have a problem being a sinner. I mean, that's what I was. What I, the problem I don't what I don't like is people who say they Christians and then they be sinners. But mm -hmm. when you say you a Christian, then be a Christian. Mm -hmm. So when I was a sinner, I didn't have no problem being a sinner. Mm -hmm. And that's what sinners do. It's just that I just saw that as okay, this is another chapter in my life, another other sins that I'm going to be exposed to. Mm -hmm. And this is what sinners do. Yeah. So that's I got involved in in smoking weed and drinking, but I had no idea that the the devil had a trap set because my dad was was alcoholic. He died when I was 16. And my dad was totally dependent on alcohol. He didn't, he had no need for food anymore. Yeah. The doctors told him to, to keep on drinking or he was going to die. So he's between yeah. a rock and a hard place. If you don't stop drinking, he's going to die. If you keep on drinking, he's going to die. Mm -hmm. But see, once I started getting taste of the alcohol, then that's when, you know, Dr. Jekyll, that's when Mr. Hyde came out. Mm -hmm. But I had no idea that that's what I was dealing with. So I'm dealing with those um the generational things and it's like drinking um actually exacerbated um that behavior or just magnified that spirit mm -hmm. that was just the outlet that the enemy chose to um to tempt me to go through in order to get that to come out of me yeah the thing is my family even though we drank the smoke and i'm not saying this to take over to my family my family wasn't wow so that's even more of a temptation. You got my brother, my uncle slash brother, because my grandma raised me. And then we got other um, like uncles and stuff like that, that, that did that, but they wasn't wild. So you got, he loved, they like brothers to him. You know, they love each other even to this day. But when they met, it was like they took to him from the very beginning. So if you got somebody you coming in, other than them not being a Christian, they're normally they're calm people. They not starting any trouble. Of course, if trouble came, you know, it was like it had to be handled, but they didn't go looking for trouble. So that's like another trap for, 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 for people. It's because that person you meet, you may say they ain't getting in no trouble. They just smoking a little weed. They drinking a little bit. You know, they said, you know, they just doing you know what everybody else doing, we just getting high and that's okay. So that's another trap because it don't look like it's wow or you ain't out there shooting people up. It's still a, a setup from the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's still a setup from the enemy. You got this church boy, you got this boy, not that he was innocent per se, but the enemy wanted, like he said, his father was an alcoholic. He needed a something. I need something if I can get a hold of him. 
I need something. And at that very moment, because everything was so calm, you know, hey, we just drank him. We got, hey, he even moved in with us. Mama let him sleep on the couch. I'm just going to be real. Let him sleep on the couch. Of course, he couldn't sleep in my room, but it's still wrong. Shouldn't be shacking. It don't matter if you're in the other room. But let him sleep on the couch. Come on. Let us sleep on the couch. So, because he started working with my brothers, them in construction. So, he was going a whole nother way. But at one point, our life just seemed like <laughs> everything stopped and he couldn't find a job. And what, that's where it transitioned him into the military. Oh, see, she's telling my <laughs> testimony for me. Come on, tell her why. I'm trying, trying to know. <laughs> You're trying to script it for me, so. <laughs> Is it a I, I can't. Nah. Go ahead. Y'all want the real. Yeah. Want the real right? I want the real. I want the real. That's why I'm giving because you did jump to unique and it wasn't time for unique I yet. Always, I can always come out. That's, that just led up that I, I wasn't going to go in depth about it, but we can always come. We can revisit unique. Okay. But I'm saying that when it comes to the, to the drinking and stuff, what I want to say was I felt safe drinking with, with my brother in laws. I felt safe. In that spot, and that's that. That one thing you got to be careful about when you are a believer. That's why you have to assemble yourselves with with people that are are in the spirit. Come out from among them that walk disorderly. You know, as my wife alluded to. But I had, I had, I felt safe sinning mm -hmm. in their presence. Yeah. So whenever you are walking with the Lord, that's why it's very important for you to be in the company of people who love the Lord like you do. Mm -hmm. That way, you can be safe to to love God. You can be safe to, to be obedient. It's safe to be righteous. But that place when you're safe and living in sin, it's like, when you going to come out of it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you going to come out of it? And it's like something dramatic has to happen for you to actually come out of it because it's so safe. And that's what, that's what led to unique was because I was comfortable with living in sin. Mm -hmm. And the devil wanted to lullaby me in that sin, you know, till he eventually, because he come to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. So, while he's got me distracted by the shiny object of weed and alcohol, he's still trying to kill me and steal me and yeah. destroy me. You know, so then God has come through and do something to shake you, something radical, you know, something that's, you know, that's uh, not of this world mm -hmm. to get your attention, you know, long enough for you to make a conscious decision to, to trust the Lord. But I want to say that I was comfortable in, in, in sinning with my brother-in-law's. I was I was comfortable with that, but God has shook me out of that that desensitization, being desensitized in that regards, you know, through my daughter. Mm.